little person inside my computer, may I simply ask, who are you? That's what this whole video is about. Welcome to the 10,000 subscriber Q&A, which is a really weird thing to say because I didn't expect to get this far at all. I thought I made it big back in 2015 with that fucking startup and shutdown video. Now I made it even bigger with this stupid video about game console errors. But for 10,000 subscribers, I thought I'd kind of deviate from my norm of making these video essay type videos and just kind of talk with y'all and answer some questions you might have. Now this is the one time I'll actually like advertise anything of mine in a video because I don't like advertising anything of mine really. If you want to find me, it's in the description. But this is also in the description and it's my Discord server. There's an entire channel dedicated to, you know, asking me questions and such. And if I remember, I will answer them. So if you have a burning question that I haven't answered in this video, you can either put it in the comments or you can join the Discord server. Either way, let's answer this first question from Victoria Nomas. Uh, who am I? My name is Nick. I go by Nimk online and I just make videos for fun. I'm currently 19 years old and I'm in college for computer science, which means I'm a stinky little coder boy. I've been making YouTube content since 2013, hence 2013 being in my banner and in my about section and all that. But in reality, I haven't been making videos constantly for that entire time. I always just kind of made videos when I felt like it. And only until recently did I actually really develop ideas that I really, really wanted to make into videos. And obviously, if you go through my Wikitubia, you'll find a lot more about me. I could literally list off my entire trivia section if you want, which I made myself, so all of it is true, trust me. The source for some of those is pretty much dude, trust me. But yeah, that's pretty much who I am. I don't know what more to say about me. I, I'm a Midwestern fuck. I don't expect to ever be a dad, but if I was a dad, I am that stereotypical Midwestern dad who stands on the porch during a tornado warning. I am that guy. I guess it's one of the interests I should... I should talk about my interests. I have a lot of interests, um, you know, not only we deleted you as you've seen in technology and video games as you've seen, but also uh, keyboards, computer keyboards. There's a reason I'm team mechanical. <laughs> I don't know why I got into computer keyboards. It's always kind of just been a been a thing I liked. And you know, ever since learning about mechanical keyboards and keyboard switches and all that, I've just enjoyed it immensely. My pride and joy, however, the IBM Model M. I actually own one. I spent a hundred bucks on a fucking keyboard from like the 80s. From the 90s. If you haven't heard of an IBM Model M, this is the keyboard that kind of shaped how keyboards are shaped now, ironically. Not the QWERTY layout, but just the overall layout of the keyboard, how this is like your alphanumeric, your, um, the fuck is this section called? I literally forgot what this section of the keyboard is called, like the arrow keys and the fucking like keys up here. I forgot what it's called, but this section, the numpad and the function row, uh, it was all designed from Model M, except for the Windows keys because IBM was a piece of shit and didn't act like Windows didn't exist. Although to be fair, the Windows key wasn't really needed for this keyboard because it came out in 94. Also, they have some amazing switches. I'm not going to do it while holding it up. I do have an actual recording on my computer of that keyboard. But, hey. Another one of my interests is weather as a just overall concept. Uh, I absolutely love knowing what the weather is and looking outside and being outside and especially during like rain and storms. I absolutely love it. I love everything about rain and storms except being outside in it. With a college campus that's walkable, I've had to walk home many a times soaked after forgetting an umbrella. But yeah, weather is a big thing for me. Uh, also, emergency alert systems. Uh, you'll notice if you follow my TikTok, I said it wasn't going to advertise, but if you know me on TikTok, you'll know that I've done an entire series debunking like the sounds on TikTok that are about emergency alert systems around the world. A lot of them are fake, and I knew this, and I wanted to set the record straight, but to be honest, I'm not really interested in a lot of sirens. I'm interested in television broadcasts, specifically the Japan Earthquake Early Warning, or EEW, or Genkyu Jishin Sokuo system. That is a very interesting system, and I want to talk about it more in detail on this channel at some point. But for now, just know it's an interest and you're going to be seeing it on this channel. But yeah, what more can I say? That, that, that be me. <laughs> so let's move on to the next one then. From Gaving Like Never Before, 
What was the reason for starting this channel? Was a good decision. Like most kids my age back in 2013, which was... I was in the third fucking grade, like the third or fourth grade when I made this channel, Jesus fucking Christ. I just wanted to be a big YouTuber, like everyone did. Everyone wanted to be the next PewDiePie, or Jacksepticeye, or Markiplier, or whoever the fuck was big back in the day. Everyone wanted to be the one. They thought they could do the exact same content as those guys, and they could be better and more whatever. I, I was one of those kids. I, ever since when I was really, really young, like three years old, or like five years old, and I was playing uh, you know, Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom on my PS2, watching gameplays on YouTube, I wanted to do that. I wanted to make gameplay videos on YouTube. And I never got to make a channel until, you know, third or fourth grade, as I said, 2013, when this channel started. Actually, it was January 2013, I was in third grade. But I absolutely wanted to make this channel so I could become big one day. And my goals are very high back in the day, but I was a young kid, and like most young kids, I wanted just to, you know, be famous. I wanted to be a YouTuber. I wanted to make money off this and be a YouTuber and be like all those guys I look up to when watching videos because I was a kid who was just stuck on the internet. And third grade me, I hope you're fucking proud because I'm making money off this shit, baby. But yeah, that's the real reason why I started this channel. I, I just wanted to make videos on YouTube like all the people I've watched. Uh, I absolutely loved watching it and I thought I could love doing it, and I absolutely do. I love video editing, and I love writing scripts and researching. I absolutely love everything about how YouTube works, except for YouTube itself. Fuck YouTube. But yeah, hopefully that answers that question. Moving on to the next one. You're Zeta Slow. Who inspired you to start YouTube? I guess all the names I previously mentioned, you know, all the big names in YouTube back in the day. That's, that's a real answer. I think the answer for who forms my content now uh, like how, what I want to make are probably like Scott the Waz, as you would probably pretty much expect from everyone calling me a Scott the Waz ripoff. I'm not, but he is a big, big influence in the way I make my content. Uh, but I don't like doing an exact Scott the Waz esque video. I do like the way he presents topics and puts jokes in the video. That's what I try to do, but I try to do it in a way that's a little more different and isn't very skit based like Scott's videos sometimes are. I just try to you know, talk about stuff. And also Nuclear Blue, formerly known as Icy Pie. Uh, I absolutely love his content that he's making. And and again, I don't want to be like a rip off of someone, but I do kind of get inspired by his content and I really do enjoy watching it and kind of learning how he does his videos and see how seeing how I can kind of incorporate some of that in my videos. Obviously his videos are very, very heavily skit based, especially now with Melissa being a character. And I don't plan on doing that a lot. The only skits you'll probably see in my videos are, you know, start and end jokes. And you know, that's probably it. Maybe one day I'll do like a skit based video, but for now it's just video essay style. But yeah, that's the people who inspired me back in the day and now. So let's move on to the next one. Distorted Chicken, what was your favorite video that you made overall? This is a great question. And I'm also going to do the uh, opposite of it, which is which is your least favorite video overall, because I do have a fucking answer for that. Uh, but actually answering the favorite one is a little bit harder, and I'm going to separate it into two categories, which is the Nymph era videos and then the entire channel as a whole. From the Nymph era videos, I think my favorite video that I made overall is the anti-piracy video. I put a lot of effort into that video, and I absolutely just loved how it came out. Um, you know, every video of mine is going to have corrections in the comments, but I think that one actually had a little less corrections than I normally have for a video like that. But I absolutely love uh, how I did that video. And I think I actually did like a little bit of a unique twist. A lot of people talk about anti-piracy either as actual anti-piracy or uh, the fake anti-piracy screens. And I did want to combine them into one video. I know Tuv did talk about the fake ones at the start of his anti-piracy video, but other than that, he didn't really go into it, he was just kind of saying there's a lot of fake ones out there. But I did want to talk about that. And I absolutely just loved the way I edited things in the video. Again, I'm the one who edits all this, I'm the one who does everything, but I absolutely loved the way I did it and I loved the way I was able I was able to do it. Especially the animation with the code wheel. I'm so happy that some website out there had both the images for the code wheel for uh, Dial a Pirate. God bless. Made the animation smooth. Favorite video of the channel overall though? I'm gonna actually have to say The Curious Case of Momozeri. To TLDR that video, Momozeri is a comic artist making a comic uh, now on Webtoon called High Class Homos, which I reread the entire thing. Oh my god, I am fucking hooked. But anyway, she made a comic and was posting it onto Instagram at the time, and Instagram was kind of taking down some posts, and there was a whole thing with it, and I just kind of went over that in the video. But that video 
what may not be the best quality nowadays, but it did kind of set into stone the way I did want to do video essay type videos where I did research and then made a script, read that script and then edited the video. And it's kind of this very production line process of one task, then another, then another, then another, then upload. And I absolutely love it for that. I don't like how I edited it because back in the day I was in a very, you know, editing phase and editing as in like fan edits, like you would see if like, I don't know. Dream SMP members or some shit. I was way into that back in the day, and I did do some of those kind of like editing transitions with it. I didn't have After Effects at the time, so my animations were um, subpar because all I had was Vegas to work with. Now I have a uh, uh, AE. I have AE to work with. And that's what I'd use to make my uh, intro and outro. But yeah, that's my favorite videos uh, from the entire era of Nimk and from the Nimk era. Uh, my least favorite video is the game console menus video because holy fucking shit. The video itself I don't think is flawed in the way of me kind of displaying game console menus over the history of the years. I just made a lot of errors when doing it. Like for one, I purposely skipped a, like a lot of the earlier consoles, specifically the Saturn. Oh my god, the guy, you guys did not forget the Saturn. My mentality in that video is I really wanted to just talk about the big three, which was Sony, Nintendo, and Microsoft, I wanted to talk about their consoles, and then I added the Dream Dreamcast later on because, you know, I thought it was relevant enough. Turns out, no, it ain't enough for YouTube comments. But not only that, obviously you can throw that away, it's like, oh, YouTube comments are being mean about that video, and you know, whatever. But I also just hate the way I presented it. It is such an opinionated video that it is... I don't know what I was doing with it. I If I redid it now, I would definitely just be talking about the menus. Although I guess talking about the menus is very boring, and I really did want to put my personality into the video, so I made it very, very opinionated, but it sparked a war in the comments. <laughs> so yeah, I don't really like that video. I mean, I can obviously talk about any older video I have uploaded on my channel right now. That's even some of the public ones that I dislike. I hate the Intel video because that's just lazy and stealing content and all that uh even my first video on the channel is public right now the windows startup and shutdown video that's technically like taking off an entire video and i just kind of you know added a bunch of little stuff in there because i thought they, i thought they did it poorly and then i did it i said oh i could do that better i made that windows movie maker and it got popular i could obviously say that those are bad but my, they're not my most hated because I didn't put effort into them, like the level of effort to reward is very disproportionate in that. The effort to reward of the game console menus video is very weird, and I don't like it for that. But yeah, hopefully that answered your question. Let's move on. The Awesome Sonic says, what video took you the most time to make? Unironically, it was the Windows Startup and Shutdown video. I know it looks simple. I know it looks absolutely simple, but okay, hear me out. The story about this video is crazy. And by crazy, I mean it's just a series of unfortunate events. So I obviously made this video in Windows Movie Maker, and I just had a bunch of images and sounds on my computer that kind of replayed over and over and over, and just put some sounds in, put some pictures in, blah blah blah. Although that kind of got tedious after a while, so I'd edit it in chunks and then, you know, go play Minecraft or whatever for like hours at a time because I got bored. But then, like, randomly, I just lost, like, the video file. Like, I lost the Movie Maker file for it. I could not find it no matter what I did, and I was so pissed because I spent ages on that video, and it's just gone. Bye-bye. I was pissed, and I just said, fuck it, I'm not doing this video anymore, and then just scrapped the idea for months at a time. I then decided, okay, I'll redo the video, and I remade it again, then that one got uploaded to YouTube in 2015, but unironically it took months for that video to make just because of that error and mistake I did, somehow deleting the file or losing it within my data hoard of a hard drive. So yeah, that's technically the, you know, longest time to make a video. Um, for like the modern videos, like the Nymph era videos, again, because I don't consider half those videos like me at this point, it's just Nymph era at this point, that's what I want to acknowledge. Um, I have to think about what video took the longest time to make. I want to say Queers Do Countdown. Queers Do Countdown was a, was a lot of planning, and I had it planned for a long time. I got my friends to be in the video and, you know, participate and such, and we recorded for about, I'm going to say an hour, probably. Yeah, like an hour's worth of footage. 
and it just took a long time to edit. Uh, my this laptop here is not the best thing. I know the specs don't look as bad when you look at it on the, my about section, but this thing is five years old and it's dead. Like it is, it is on his, his deathbed. One of the fans broke and I replaced it with the replacement and the replacement was so sh** and it kept making noise that I just took it out. This computer has one fan in it right now. <laughs> Uh, thank God I'm replacing it, and my replacement is coming in tomorrow. Thanks to y'all. I've already said thank you in the community, but thank you. <laughs> but you know, with this crappy computer and iPhone footage at 1080p 60, and multiple audio files, and me having to like do a bunch of editing stuff in post, it it was hell. That took a long time, and I also had like two phases during that editing process where I, I edited that video hungover, as well as editing that video with like a cold and the thing about me is i when i get sick i get sick like i have the worst immune system known to man if i get a common cold i am down for the count for like a week not even that it's like the entire month it'll take like a month for it to kind of go away fully but it'll probably take four days for like the worst of it to go but yeah that video took a long time to make also because uh, it didn't want me to render it half the damn time. It was so much for the computer that it literally just stopped editing. It just stopped rendering. Like midway through the rendering process, it would freeze up and pause. And I was like, oh. Eventually, I just upgraded my Vegas version because at the point, I think I've been using 19. I finally went to Vegas Pro 20 and then it worked. Don't ask me how. But yeah, the video got up and it still had editing errors in it anyway, so fuck it, who cares? But yeah, that's probably the one that, takes, that took the most time. Um, unless you're gonna count like the time in between, uh, I believe, Queers Do Countdown and then the Game Console My News video. Because that was like two months. <laughs> but we don't talk about that. That was me just being lazy. Oh, you know what, actually? Now that I'm remembering this. Uh, so right when I left to go home for Christmas break, I realized when I brought everything back home here, I'm at home for summer break, but I realized when I went home that I forgot my hard drive at my college, which is two hours away. Uh, I have an external hard drive because this thing has like a, I wanna say a 512 gig SSD that I filled up immediately. Actually, I think it's 256 gig. It's even smaller, but this thing doesn't have a big uh, solid state drive in it. And that's the only storage it came with. So I bought an external hard drive so I, and that has all my data on it. If I lose it, I like lose all my data. And I forgot that at my dorm when I left in December. And so I had to wait like until January to go back and start working on videos again. And during that time, I was editing the game console menus video. That actually took a long, long time. I had started the script in November and that video did not come out until January because I just forgot my hard drive. It was also during that time that Nuclear Blue uploaded his video on game console menus, which was the funniest thing to me because, oh, we had the same idea. I technically had it before him, but I wasn't able to make it because oopsie doopsie, I forgot my fucking hard drive. <laughs> but yeah, that one actually pro probably took the most time to make now that I thought about it. Hey, you got some anecdotes out of me, so good job. Next question. GMD Wiz Pro, have you ever considered making YouTube shorts? I technically do have a YouTube short on here, which is the Happy Birthday Adelaide video which I made on TikTok and then just reposted to here because I thought that's what all the cool YouTubers do. But in reality, I don't especially like short form content like TikTok and YouTube shorts, at least in the style that I make videos. I, I am on TikTok, you know, just enjoying content on there. I absolutely like will die laughing at whatever time of the night I am scrolling through TikTok. It is some of the funniest things to like see on there, really it is. But the content I make, I don't think works well with TikTok. I did try to make a short short form content video, which was the Splitter video, the uh, can Splitter work with AI or not AI, can Splitter and, you know, computerized voices, that video. That I uploaded to TikTok and I made for TikTok, uh, but I don't necessarily think that that kind of content is for me. I definitely do have ideas that I don't think I can stretch out into like a 10, 20 minute video for like a video essay style thing. Uh, but I do think they could be in like a short form content video. But the thing is, YouTube shorts are limited to 60 seconds. TikToks can be up to 10 minutes. Uh, although I try to stay within like 60 seconds for that because, you know, music and such, like half the day music only stops at a minute, which sucks. But YouTube shorts are just not my cup of tea. I don't watch YouTube shorts unless it's something that really interests me and pops up in my feed. I don't scroll YouTube shorts like I scroll TikTok. 
because TikTok has a f***ing crazy algorithm that I'm sure knows more about me than I know about me at this point, but hey. But yeah, I do have ideas for YouTube Shorts. I don't know if I'm ever going to go through with that, but I do have ideas in my ideas list that I do think would work better as a YouTube Short or as a TikTok rather than a full fleshed out video essay kind of video. Don't count on it, but hey. Next question then. Hey Gamer422, what is your favorite Nintendo game? My favorite one is Miitopia. I've actually never played Miitopia. I have it for the 3DS yet. I've never played it. I asked for it for Christmas because I thought, oh, this would be fun. Then I looked at it again. I said, I'm never going to play this. But you know, for as much as I am a Nintendo fan, I haven't played a lot of Nintendo games. Like, I've played Wii Sports and Mario and... Uh, I really haven't played a lot of Nintendo games. I played like a little bit of Majora's Mask, and by a little bit, I probably mean like 0.01% of the game when my friend gave me the 3DS remake of it and let me like walk around for a little bit during a car ride, like a car ride back from like Boy Scouts or some shit. Shout out Rex, we need to do a fucking 2023 collab. But really, I haven't played a lot of Nintendo games, to be honest. Uh, but I think my favorite Nintendo game well, a basic answer is going to be Sports Resort, Wii Sports Resort. Wii Sports Resort is always a fun game and has a lot of replay value for me. I always love, you know, just having fun with Wii Sports Resort and playing the 100 pin bowling, playing ping pong, table tennis, whatever the fuck it's called. I think a runner up is the original Wii Play. Wii Play is also insanely fun to play and yeah, I absolutely love that. But yeah, I really haven't played a lot of, a lot of Nintendo games. I I really just haven't. Like, I've never played a, the majority of Nintendo's, like, franchise games. I've never played a lot of Zelda, or any Zelda, really, or, you know, Metroid or Mother or whatever else. I just haven't played it. So call me sacrilegious for being a Nintendo fanboy. I'm just a fan of their consoles, not their games. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the company, to be honest. Fuck them. But, yeah, most of my favorite games of Nintendo consoles are not Nintendo games. They're third-party stuff. You know, but yeah, next question. What's the story behind your first game console ever? Well, let me tell you. Uh, this is my first game console ever. This is at least my first home video game console ever. This a PS2 Slim. This was my first game console. I believe I got it for Christmas. I don't remember exactly. I was so damn young. I was like two or three at this point, but this is my first ever game console and it came with Toy Story 3 apparently. I never played Toy Story 3. At least I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, I've had this console for God knows how long, and I've played a bunch of games on it. A lot of them are just right there, so I'm gonna start pulling them out and naming them. Name a few. I don't, I don't have it right up here. I don't know where I put it, but Flipnik. Flipnik is like one of the, my favorite games from my childhood. The original Battle for Bikini Bottom. God bless. So I was big into pinball back in the day, and I absolutely loved these Pinball Hall of Fames games. Uh, this was the more fun version, the Williams Collection. Also, if I wanted to like calm down, I'd play the Gottlieb Collection. Another classic from the era, Simpsons Hit and Run. Absolutely loved mowing down pedestrians for no f***ing reason. The child-friendly version of GTA. So this game looks weird. <laughs> this is Frogger The Great Quest. I could not tell you the plot because I have not played this game in ages, but it is a Frogger game that's like 3D platformer. And I absolutely remember playing the shit out of it and never understanding it. I remember there was like a boat section. I need to replay it. This would, I know this will give me like tons of nostalgia just playing it, but I don't remember shit about it. And I'm not going to pull out any more games out of here, but I do see the B-Movie game, which I played a lot of, a lot, a lot of. Uh, Thrillville Off The Rails, fucking love Thrillville Off The Rails. I think there's a YouTuber who did a video essay on Thrillville, fucking watch it, it's brilliant, gave me tons of nostalgia. Um, what else? Ape Escape 3. I played a lot of Ape Escape 3, and do want to do a video on... I want to do a video on all the games I've mentioned here. Maybe not the more popular ones, but definitely, you know, Ape Escape 3 and Thrillville, maybe. But, yeah, I played a lot of games back in my day. I love this console. I had a bunch of PS1 games as well, but I've already been talking for way too long. The other console I had when I was a kid was a hand-me-down Game Boy Color. This exact one. I Again, I don't give away stuff. A lot of stuff. But yeah, this exact teal Game Boy Color I've had for ages. And I only really played one game on it for my childhood, which was Super Mario Land. And I think I've completed it a few times at this point. I need to clean this thing, Jesus Christ. But yeah, this was a hand-me-down and I played this thing to death. Um, 
If you'll notice on the back here, there is a remnant of an Apple sticker, because I put an Apple sticker on the back of this a long, long time ago, and I finally ripped it off. I'm so shocked that the Nintendo number is still on there and like in pristine condition. I I really do need to clean this up, but I, I use my Game Boy Advance SP to do any kind of Game Boy games now, so hey. It's probably fine. But yeah, that's the story behind those. Um, one was just a hand-me-down and one I got for Christmas. Um, I did play a Wii. Uh, my grandma had a Wii. And I'd always play Wii Sports with her and or like the earlier Just Dances, Just Dance 2 and 3 and such. But yeah, that's the story behind them. Next question. Melvalor, what music do you listen to? I'm someone who just kind of listens to any kind of music. I'm not someone who says like, oh, I listen to everything. I'm, I will listen to everything, you know, like, uh, like I will not go out of my way to go listen to some harsh noise music, right? But if someone pulls on like, you know, pulls Demon by Mers Bow and be like, all right, I can vibe with this. I, I grew up in an environment where I just kind of listened to a lot of music. My dad played in a band and so he had a drum set downstairs and he would sometimes have his friends over and, you know, they would play their little songs and whatnot. And, and it always would be really, really loud and always be right under my room. But I came from somewhere where my dad listened to rock, my mom listened to pop, my grandma listened to country, and then I live in St. Louis, so I heard a lot of hip hop. And I just kind of melted all that together, and, and now I pretty much just like anything. But I mostly just listen to like very upbeat kind of stuff now. You know, something with heavy bass that is very upbeat and hyper. Although I do let tend to listen to like a lot of lo-fi music sometimes. If you're looking for some really calming music, mind I suggest In Love of the Ghost. Love their work. I think they worked on a song for Celeste, which is great. But yeah, if you need something to calm to listen to and you don't want to listen to like the lo-fi girl or something, listen to In Love of the Ghost and Love of the Ghost has some bangers. They're, they're short bangers, but they're bangers nonetheless. But yeah, I really don't have a genre that I'm like contained by. If it's melodic, I'll listen to it, and even if it's not, I might listen to it. <laughs> Although I do have a soft spot in my heart for any music that has a gujung or a koto in it, because I absolutely love the- I just love those instruments. But yeah, I don't- I don't know the answer to that one myself, so hopefully that answers it. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so I had to like, kind of translate this one, I'm sorry. I like Teslas, but I had to like, figure out what this said by like, reading it out loud, so hey. What Mac would you have an update to Windows 11? I'll, I'll start with that second one first. Uh, this computer cannot upgrade to Windows 11. I would if I could, but this thing cannot upgrade. It's like the whole thing with Microsoft where it's an incompatible processor. And I know I could disable the incompatible processor thing, but I knew I was going to throw this computer out in a short amount of time. So I just didn't care about upgrading it. Um, and I'm upgrading it hopefully tomorrow at the time of this recording. I'm getting my new computer tomorrow. And I think that should have that sh actually i think i checked it it does have windows 11 compatibility so i will be doing that yeah! so uh, yeah i would if i could on this computer but uh what mac would i have it's a very broad question i think in this theoretical sense i would have infinite money because <laughs> i don't have that money i do not have macintosh money i do not have that kind of money yeah i have an iphone which i'm using to record this video with but I do not have that Macintosh money, buddy. But if in this theoretical sense, I was able to afford any Macintosh in the Apple library, I would definitely go with something M2, I think, with an M2 processor in it. Or actually, probably their M2 MacBooks. Not an actual desktop computer, but their M2 MacBooks. The convenient thing with this laptop is that if it had a working screen, which it doesn't because I broke it, but if it had a working screen, I'd be able to kind of just take it anywhere and then edit videos anywhere or, you know, you just do whatever and it's insanely fast and good i can game on the go that's the point of a gaming laptop and i know the m m2s may not be the best for gaming but for video processing for actually working on the go with what i want to do m2s are going to be great for that and i definitely will get like the highest range m2 macbook with the highest storage and highest ram whatever else because i like that i'd like to have that power on the go so that no, no matter where I am, if I'm bored at like a family gathering or some shit, and I don't want to talk to anyone, pull out my MacBook, start editing. Like, bro, I'm about to pull up to a party. I'm about to pull up to the function with my MacBook. And if I just get overstimulated with the fucking dance floor happening, I'm just going to pull out my MacBook and start editing the next video. <laughs> but yeah, 
Um, if I would, I probably would go Mac because again, I have an iPhone and an Apple Watch over there that's broken as fuck and I need to replace it, but I probably wouldn't go Mac if I had that money and I refuse to go to Linux because I hate the Linux community. Also, I'm just so used to Windows at this point that I'll let them steal my data because everyone's already stolen my fucking data. Y'all can be as safe as you want, but if you leave a comment on this video, there is no doubt in my mind that Google knows something about you. I'm not saying that you should just give up doing data privacy stuff to obviously protect your data. You know, you have the right to do that, but dumb me probably sold all my data to some Chinese company back in like 2012, so. Got nothing else than blues. I use TikTok, what do you expect? Anyways, I hope that was your question and hopefully I answered it. But let's move on to the next one. Nikki Turner, what is your favorite food? That's a hard question. I, do, I like anything with meat in it. I am not a vegan, I'm not a vegetarian, and I'm not gonna diss anyone who is vegan or vegetarian because. I see where y'all coming from. I just enjoy meat way too much to go to that route. But I am a big meat eater. I absolutely love meat. Can't say that without looking sus. You know, it's not even sus. Go fuck yourselves. But I do like, you know, a good steak, a good rib. I really do love ribs. Uh, but I think my favorite food out of all other foods is a nice, like, beef noodle stew like chinese like hand pulled noodles not like the, the very thick ones that you might get in like thai food but like hand pulled very chewy noodles in a beef broth with beef and like bok choy in there like that is pinnacle i went to new york in like 2021 and i went to flushing which is a big chinatown in new york city at least within like the like you know boroughs i think it's in queens but it is a very nice place to go. I really do recommend going there. It is a lovely place to be and if you know Chinese you'll have a great time there. But I went there and it was an insanely good experience and there's a there's a place I think it was called like oh it was like 44 South Forest or like something like that. But it had this it had this dish. It was you know beef broth with noodles and beef and bok choy and, it, and it's a very simple dish, but it is so, so good. I could have it every day. There's, a, there's an area near me, uh, near me, it's in St. Louis, uh, that serves the same thing. And it's in a restaurant called Corner 17. It is a busy place in, uh, I believe, The Loop. And it is, it is a great place. It's right by Fitz's. You can go to Fitz's if you want, but just know there's something else better for you there. Fitz's is good. I'm a, I'm, I'm a proud St. Louis and I love Fitz's, but... Come on, it's right there. But yeah, that's my probably my favorite food, and I absolutely love enjoying that. It's not a dish I get often, uh, because I don't know a lot of places that will have it exactly like that, but an, a great dish, nonetheless. But yeah, move on to the last question, which is a very simple one from Smeggers: ketchup or mustard? Wasn't this a, wasn't this a Splatoon thing? I don't play Splatoon, obviously, as we've established with how I don't play any Nintendo games. But wasn't this a supposed to thing? I don't know what it's called, like those like... Like... Th I forgot what it's called. I, th I think ketchup and- it was, I think it was ketchup, mustard, and mayo. It was ketchup, ketchup, mustard, and mayo because they made mayo white and it looked horrible. <laughs> Anyways, ketchup or mustard, I- I have mustard. I'm actually not big into condiments at all. Really, I'm not big into condiments. If I get fries with a meal, I don't order condiments with it. If it's something like, you know, chicken nuggets from McDonald's, I'm getting some barbecue sauce, right? Or if it's like actual chicken tenders from like a sports bar or something, I'm gonna get some ranch with that because the Midwestern is fuck. But other than that, I don't really order condiments, but I prefer mustard to ketchup. I really do. Like if I had to pick only one to go on like a hot dog, it's gonna be mustard. Although on a burger, I might put, I don't know. I don't like condiments. <laughs> to be honest, where there's ketchup, there is mustard as well, and vice versa. So, in reality, I'm gonna put both if I have the option, if I really wanted to. There's a burger place in my uh, college's cafeteria, food court area, uh, that that makes burgers and you know typical burger meals. You get a burger, fries, and a drink for like one combo meal, effectively. But it is they for some reason just stopped salting their fries like their fries are pretty much just pure potato at this point like it's like just pure potato deep fried in vegetable oil and you can just taste it it just tastes like potato deep fried in vegetable oil it is 
not good. They, they, they stopped salting it. The first semester they salted it, the second semester they didn't. And one day they ran out of salt in the food court. The food court normally has salt for like just meals if you want to have salt and pepper. They didn't have any salt packets. And to substitute that, I just used ketchup. I hadn't eaten fries with ketchup in a long time. And yeah, I mean, it wasn't bad. I like, I like it, but I use it as a substitute. And I might, I might do it again, but hey, you know, <laughs> I'm not a big condiments guy. If I was to be a condiments guy, I'm going to be a ranch guy because I'm Midwestern, as we've established. I have a friend who did a shot of ranch one time. Howdy, Jacob. But that was the last question. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any more questions, put them in the comments or ask them in the Discord because I'm on both of those things. I stalk my YouTube comments like a fucking hawk and I'm always online. So, <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. And I do want to take some time here to thank you all in audio and video for 10,000 subscribers. Y'all are absolutely amazing. And I can't express enough how thankful I am to you guys for ge getting me this far. I Like, I didn't think making these stupid videos would get me this far. I did not think about that at all. I just made videos for the fun of it. I really, really did. And I'm still going to be making videos for the fun of it. I don't want that to change. I don't want just because I'm making money off of this and that I now have many subscribers to my name. I, I don't want that to change why I make my content. I make this because I like it and I think it's fun. And also because I know someone out there is going to like it. That's that's it. That's the real reason. I don't do this for the money. You're not going to see me shilling out to piece of shit sponsors if I ever get any. You know, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be making this content for you and for me. I make content for me mostly and then if anyone else likes it, hey, they happen to like it. But it, it really is crazy that I'm sitting here and I did the intro to this video saying this is my 10,000 subscriber Q&A because I never I never thought that this would happen. You know, I, I, I hear YouTubers do it all the time, you know, watching YouTubers grow bigger and bigger and seeing them do this kind of stuff as well. And it's surreal for me to say that now. And I, I look at that number and just still it's the process in my head. Like 10,000 people clicked on the subscribe button. That's, that's incredible to me. And I mean, you're, you guys are helping me out more than you could ever imagine. You're, you're giving me something to do when I normally will stay in my room and just play games all day. And now I have something to do. And it's it's crazy cool, and I'm I'm able, finally able to upgrade this shitty computer. Yeah, that's, this is this is just crazy, and I I honestly God can't thank you enough. And the the only way I can thank you, I guess, is just making more videos, making more content for y'all. So, I guess for one last time, before I finally shut up about this for the longest time, hopefully, it's just thank you, thank you for getting me this far, and you know. <laughs> I, I, I don't have words. Just just thank you. Also, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. That's probably being edited on my new computer. With holy fucking shit. I can finally throw this fucking thing away. Although I'll probably keep this computer just because it's funny to like watch games lag. My friend is specifically making me keep this computer and not batting it down because it's fun to watch me fucking lag during stream, I guess. I don't know, but thank you for watching, and have a nice day. See ya.